start of spring break, and that has a number of Hawaii vacationers doubling this weekend. You could see it on our streets and our beaches. Our Chelsea Davis reports from Waikiki. This is what Waikiki looks like on a Monday. According to the state's website, more than 21,000 people are expected to arrive today in Hawaii. Visitors and locals we spoke with say they have seen a huge influx in tourists just in the last couple of weeks. I moved here in January for a couple months just to like work remote and enjoy the beach. And as March has been coming around, more people have been coming. Beaches are once again packed in Waikiki. Drone video shows the crowds on the sand and in the water. This is what Maui looked like today in Ka'anapali near Black Rock. And this is what Waikiki looked like yesterday. A noticeable difference from about a year ago when it was practically empty. Yeah, it's definitely way busier. We were at a beach yesterday and we could barely find a spot to sit down. Delaney Willis arrived in Hawaii on Saturday. She, along with about 16,000 other vacationers, that's more than double from the week before. Having this little break of not having them was good, but then being in the industry of like tourism and stuff, we you know, getting back to work, feeling like we're normal again is, is a good feeling. It's good news for locals like Dustin Fernandez. He's a surf instructor in Waikiki and is happy to be back at work. Yeah, so I've been seeing more families come. Spring break just started. So I think um, with this week, we'll see more people coming. The head of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association says he's right as a mixture of visitors head to Hawaii for spring break. The budget conscious traveler that wants to come and bring their family, uh, young adults who are on spring vacation uh, that are longing uh, to come to a place where they can uh, have fun in a nice, safe and healthy way. And then those who uh, can afford uh, to come to Hawaii and stay at the resorts. Hanneman attributes the pent-up demand, the state's successful safe travels program, and an increase in vaccinations as reasons for the influx. In Waikiki, Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. Just in time for this week's hot weather, several more beaches in the North County have reopened starting today with some restrictions, of course. NBC7's Audra Stafford is live from uh, Torrey Pine State Beach, where so far, Audra, people are uh, following all those rules, right? So far, so good from what I can tell out here. Now, there aren't a ton of people out here. We've seen a few, but part of that is that uh, all the parking is still closed off here. So the free spaces along the street here, as well as the parking at the state park, all still closed. So you have to walk down. It is kind of a hike if you're walking down from Del Mar. But speaking of Del Mar, the beach there is open as well. Starting today, people behaving themselves there too. We did see dozens of surfers hit the water before sunrise this morning. They were all pretty excited to be hitting the waves after all this time. Pretty cool. Yeah, finally able to do something. Definitely, definitely missed it. Now these two were among the first to get back in the water near Powerhouse Park this morning. We also saw lots of people out running and walking, just enjoying that fresh ocean air. The beaches in Del Mar, Solana Beach, Carlsbad, and here in Torrey Pines are all back open, but you have to keep moving. You can't lounge around on the sand or play a game of volleyball with your friends. You must maintain a six foot social distance from anyone who doesn't live with you. And if you are out in the water, or if you're not out in the water, you must have a mask with you and put it on if you're within six feet of others. Just a few simple rules that all of the people who come to these beaches are hoping that everyone else will follow. This is my favorite break. I hope that everyone can like keep moving so the beaches don't get closed again and um, we can keep enjoying the beaches during, like during this hard time. Try to do what they're asking us to do so they don't close us down like Orange County. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's I the bottom line. Yeah, and still maintain that caution that you know it's, it doesn't mean it it's free and now it's open and everything's back to the old normal now both seagrove park and powerhouse park in del mar remain closed except for beach access points city workers were out there this morning blocking them off again the nearby parking lots in del mar 
are also closed. And back here in Torrey Pines, you can see again that the parking at the state park is still closed as well as the state reserve itself. So you will not be able to hike here for the time being. But again, you can come down, walk along the beach, head out in the water, enjoy a day here at beautiful Torrey Pines. And the sun is finally starting to burn off the marine layer. So it's going to be a beautiful day out here. Live in Torrey Pines, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. Wow, what a difference a year makes. It was a year ago today that the L.A. County Health Department would issue what would become the first of many coronavirus related health orders. Today we're reporting 1.8% positivity rate in the state of California. With COVID numbers across the state still moving in the right direction, 10 more counties shifted into the red today, including Ventura and Riverside. Now all counties in Southern California are in the less restrictive tier allowing for more businesses to reopen, such as gyms, movie theaters, indoor dining and restaurants, and on-site learning for grades 7 through 12. 47 of our 58 counties have moved out of the less restrictive tier. Officials say a county must remain in the red tier for at least three weeks before moving to the even less restrictive orange tier, even if the county's metrics aligned earlier with the orange tier. LA County officials say right now, LA County is on track to move into the orange tier, possibly by early April. We saw a lot of movement last week. We've seen a lot of movement this week. And you're going to see even more movement next week. When a county shifts from red into the orange tier, many businesses can increase capacity. Restaurants, churches, and movie theaters can go from 25 to 50 percent. Outdoor live performances and outdoor pro sports can go from 20 to 33 percent. And theme parks from 15 to 25 percent. More and more business activity, more people back in schools, more and more energy, more and more optimism about this state. While vaccine supply remains limited in California, Governor Gavin Newsom says that's about to change. We're going from scarcity in the next five and a half, six weeks to abundance. And more vaccine sites are opening every day. This couple was excited about getting vaccinated at a new La Puente site. I want to be able to see my grandkids. You know, we could uh, be able to see them and uh, spend more time with them. As for schools, Newsom, who paid a visit to an Alameda County elementary school, says 9,000 out of the state's 11,000 schools have either opened or have committed to a reopening date. I haven't felt this optimism in 12 months, Margaret. Uh, here in Los Angeles, we have a positivity rate of 1.9%, and we estimate that anywhere between half and two-thirds of our population has antibodies in it now, either wow. because of exposure to COVID-19 and vaccinations. In Cocoa Beach, spring break's comeback is bigger than expected and a welcome sign for business owners. The last year, uh, I closed the restaurant for, for the pandemic, the COVID-19. This time last year, lockdowns began. Now, instead of leaving, crowds are coming. It's a lot of people here. At Latin Shark, where the menu offers a culinary vacation of its own. Colombia, Venezuela, Peru, Puerto Rican. The restaurant recently moved and expanded in the hope of catching more customers. The Sunny Bunnies Boutique recently did the same. I'm just seeing an increase in people. Um, people want to get out. Just in time, too, because business is picking up. A lot from Orlando are coming over for the beaches. Many local business owners here in downtown Cocoa Beach tell us they're seeing visitors not just from all over Central Florida, but across the country, too. Michigan, Virginia, everywhere. This past weekend, beaches in Brevard County were packed. 
We're seeing a lot more of that split decision, get in the car, drive from across the state. At the Regional Chamber of Commerce office, CEO Jennifer Sugarman tells us the pre-planned bookings are still far from the norm overall, but interest from in-state visitors is higher than usual, even compared to pre-pandemic periods. We've actually experienced an 800% increase in visitors from within our own state to our website. In Cocoa Beach, Matt LaPoli, West 2 News. The Cocoa Beach Regional Chamber is now looking ahead with a focus on summer. A new campaign will roll out soon to market the Space Coast area across the state and elsewhere as a vacation destination. Off the top here at 6 o'clock, two things creating cause for concern. The amount of people flocking to South Florida and COVID virus variants both on the rise. Hello and welcome everyone. Florida reporting the highest number of COVID-19 mutations in the entire nation. And officials fear spring breakers in our state could become infected and spread the virus when they return back home. Simmons Raphael Pierce live in Miami Beach with details on this. Raphael. Yeah, that's right. So it's already been a busy afternoon out here in Miami Beach. The fear is that as the night goes on, more people will come out and not follow COVID regulations. I'm visiting here from Dallas right now. I'm from Maryland. Spring breakers touching down in the Sunshine State. From Fort Lauderdale to Miami Beach, South Florida bars and restaurants packed with people. Uh, there's a lot more spring breakers. There's a lot more traffic. There's a lot more people out. There's a lot more skin out. And so it just seems like a good time this year. Out on Ocean Drive, many seen without masks and little social distancing. When I see folks not wearing masks, it doesn't concern me because I know that I have mine on. And I think as long as I'm protecting myself, I'm also protecting those around me as well. And a similar sight in Fort Lauderdale. And while vaccinations are on the rise and case counts have seen a decline, health experts say this isn't the time to let your guard down. We have to continue with the measures that exist to protect ourselves from any infection. So that means the distance, the cleaning, the masks. According to the CDC, Florida is the state with the highest number of COVID-19 variants. Experts fear spring breakers could just add to the problem. People who were previously infected may not have a strong enough protection from these new variants. Videos like this also causing concern. Streets flooded with visitors as Miami Beach cops try to control some of the spring break chaos. We've learned multiple people were arrested Thursday night for things like disorderly conduct and resisting an officer. For weeks, local leaders have been calling on the public to follow health guidelines. They're also taking measures like enhancing police presence and prohibiting alcohol on the beach. Dr. Marty stressing that people can still enjoy spring break. She just asks you avoid high risk situations. Obviously, if you're uh, swimming in the ocean, your risk is extremely low. But if you're in a crowded space, indoors that's poorly ventilated with a lot of people who are not from your uh, bubble, then your risk becomes quite high. Okay, now don't forget there is still a curfew in place throughout Miami-Dade County. That is from midnight until 6 a.m. And for more information on all the changes throughout South Florida during this spring break, you can check out our website, WSVN.com. For now, reporting live in Miami Beach, Rafael Pierce, 7 News. Now at 9, an iconic hotspot is shut down as another wild weekend packed with partygoers and police unfolds on South Beach. Crowds of spring breakers packed Ocean Drive into the early morning hours. And at times, some got rowdy and reckless. Seven's Alex Browning is live on South Beach this morning with more on how police and restaurant owners are dealing with all of this. Alex? And Alex, this morning, it is a peaceful, tranquil, tranquil morning here on South Beach, something that businesses and police have not been used to during the evening and weekends here on Iconic Ocean Drive and those unruly crowds forcing the Clevelander to decide to shut down their bar and restaurant. It's a Friday night run. You're looking at just how wild it can get during a crowded Miami Beach street party. It's persisted for weeks. A sea of people on Ocean Drive. Thousands of spring breakers, some with large bottles of booze in hand, packed the streets of Ocean Drive between 7th and 8th Friday night. Many thousands more partied elsewhere within the entertainment district. And it can get dangerous within seconds. 
This is the tail end of a stampede Friday evening. That came moments after this large gathering near Wet Willies. It's near where these Miami Beach cops were stationed and ready to move at a moment's notice. Officers from different agencies across South Florida were also seen all over the beach, including on the MacArthur Causeway. Here's where the crowd won't be parting the iconic Clevelander. In a letter posted on social media Friday, management aired concerns about the ability of the city to maintain a safe environment in the surrounding area. They temporarily closed their normally busy bar and restaurant. Yet last month, this sign was up at the famous hotel saying misbehavior was encouraged. <laughs> and night after night, the misbehavior on the beach gets recorded. I hate seeing the videos. Thursday night, more than 20 people arrested, hundreds of others over the last month. In the past five and a half weeks, I mean, we've seen close to over 900 arrests. And spring break on South Beach isn't even close to being over. Not being over, it's expected that spring break crowds like what we've seen over the past several weeks will continue through mid-April. Meanwhile, management at the Clevelander says they will reevaluate reopening their restaurant and bar sometime next week. We're live on South Beach this morning. Alex Browning today in Florida. Well, tonight after a weekend of spring break chaos, officials in Miami Beach are cracking down. They're extending an emergency 8 p.m. curfew all the way through April 12th. Correspondent David Begno is there. After a year of COVID lockdowns around the country, you might say the cork finally blew. Hey! This is what police say has been the worst of spring break on Miami Beach. <laughs> Where partying turned to chaos before police eventually moved in with SWAT teams. At times, there were skirmishes with mostly unmasked revelers. <laughs> police fired pepper balls to disperse the crowd, and they made more than 50 arrests here since Friday. <laughs> By Saturday night, there was a state of emergency in effect and an 8 p.m. curfew for the city's entertainment district. All sorts of things from just inappropriate conduct to, to full out uh, criminal activity, which has become a real policing challenge. And there's a health challenge. Florida has the most cases of COVID variants than any other state, including that highly transmissible P1 strain from Brazil. And Florida ranks fifth nationwide in the rate of positive COVID tests. Those statistics suggest that this is not a place uh, that is, you know, out of the woods by any means. And then you put in these crowds and, and all of a sudden you have really something uh, that feels like an emergency. Meanwhile, the TSA is reporting 1.5 million people were screened at airports yesterday. That makes for the busiest travel day in a year. Back here on Miami Beach, it was dead today. The question is, what's tonight going to bring? Every time the police will come around, we'll run to the next street. And y'all come again and we're to the next street. So that's how it's going to be until we decide we want to go home. The curfew does not apply to residents of Miami Beach or hotel guests. They can come and go as they please. But if you don't have business here, the city is using the curfew as a way to tell people, stay away. David Begno, Miami Beach.